dominance is essential in the modern battle space, allowing militaries to control the skies and dictate the terms and conditions of a fight. The concept will be crucial in the Asia-Pacific region in the coming decades, where countries like Japan face a range of challenges. Advanced fighter aircraft are of course the key to air dominance, but so is the equipment they depend upon, from radar to electronic warfare systems. As Japan looks to upgrade its fighter fleet, such technologies are taking centre stage. The 2019 National Defense Program guidelines made it clear for Japan that space, cyber and EW were national security priorities for Japan, which are obviously three core capabilities of RINS. Um, one specific need that Japan has identified is their plan to design and develop a sixth generation indigenous fighter called the FX Future Fighter. Um, it's anticipated that Jap Japanese industry will look to partner with international contractors um, for this aircraft, uh, you know, to go into their long-term defense needs. Raytheon Intelligence and Space offers a wide range of solutions in the air dominant space, focused on radars, sensors, and electronic warfare systems. Japan has been a critical market for the company for decades. Obviously, one of the biggest things that we have been doing over the last 60 years is partnering with Japan on our APG-63 fire control radar, which now is in discussions to go upgrade that to our latest APG-82. So we do have a significant amount of work product in Japan and work with our customer on a daily basis to ensure that their needs are met uh, from sustainment to you know, future aircraft. The one thing that I am very excited about is obviously uh, bringing APG-82 and the F-15E aircraft to Japan and upgrading the jets that they currently have. Obviously, they have a big F-35 presence right now, but F-15 is obviously very close, near and dear to my heart. And we are very excited about this partnership uh, with Boeing, USAF, and also Japanese industry to bring APG-82 uh, and the capabilities that that offers to help protect uh, the Japanese people. Raytheon Intelligence and Space's work in Japan is part of a broader focus on the Asia-Pacific region, which has seen particular development in Australia in recent years. We definitely have provided air dominance solutions, including fire control radars and our next generation jammer, to several countries in the APAC region, including the Republic of Korea, Singapore, as well as Australia. In that region, we leverage the capability, scalability, and power of overall Raytheon technologies um, to help our customers achieve mission success, partner with local industry, and also support their defense and security requirements. Going into a little bit more detail, for example, in Australia, uh, we established a local presence in 1999 called Raytheon Australia, which has grown to become the nation's leading provider of capabilities for the Australian Defense Force and is fully dedicated to developing a sovereign workforce and comprehensive capability for Australia. So Raytheon Australia's team of 1500 employees, which includes about 700 engineers and technicians, has positioned us successfully to deliver on a range of diverse programs in joint battle space systems, mission systems, above water systems, underwater systems, as well as weapons. Such technologies and the aircraft they empower have evolved in many ways over the past decade, with advances in capability helping operators adapt to new threats. Over the last five to 10 years, there's been a continued need to support aircraft modernization as well as sustainment needs uh, while developing the next gen technologies for partners. Um, you know, we specialize in open architecture systems that allow for rapid upgrades and scalability. Um, and then with our radar, electro-optical infrared, EOIR, and EW technologies, we, we can enable superior detection range, targeting, tracking, and protection. And so what we're also seeing as time goes on is that the need for system and platform agnostic support, it's going to be critical to those systems. And so that's where cybersecurity is going to be at the forefront of that um, with those threats that are coming. While air dominance technologies are evolving, so are the ways in which those technologies are developed. This is particularly notable when it comes to digital engineering. 
purpose of, of digital engineering is to make the overall program lifecycle much quicker, right? It's, it, it's, it's about having all of your systems integrated from initial design to supply chain to operations build to get capability quicker. And so I think in terms of that, we are obviously have already started incorporating that into a lot of our programs. Um, I think this could definitely be applied to the FX Future Fighter, obviously, to start that womb to tomb. Um, but the whole point of digital engineering is to, to help the build cycle and to help get capabilities out much quicker. And that's definitely something that we have a core capability in and something that we have a big focus on in terms of our leadership priorities in order to incorporate that into our current programs and, and reap the benefits of that. One example of that is our RINS's Common Open Secure Mission Computer or COSMIC. Um, it's actually a platform agnostic mission computer uh, that can be used on any aircraft, whether that's fixed wing or rotary wing. And so essentially it uses DevSecOps software development process to, and by using agile development and iterative updates, users can feel the system much more rapidly than you would, you know, a, a system that was, you know, created five to 10 years ago. It also ensures that users are not stuck in the kind of legacy on off development cycle that we have seen in the past with our customers. So there's, there'll be continual development, continual integration and continual maturation of this architecture uh, to be able to offer these things that are already essentially like ready made. Looking to the future, Raytheon Intelligence and Space expects to see substantial developments in open architecture systems, which will make it much easier to build and upgrade air dominance technologies. Obviously that's coming up very quickly because that gives an opportunity for us to deploy systems very quickly um, and, and critically. Um, and in addition to that, you know, from an evolution standpoint, we're, we see that in our radar in our radar as well. So I mentioned the partnership that we've had with Japan uh, for APG 63 fire control radar and now taking that to APG 82. So, you know, they've had the APG 63 flying on their aircraft. We have been sustaining that configuration for the last you know, last 20, 30 years, we are continuing to do that into the future. But with the APG-82, we're bringing additional um, air to surface capabilities, air to air capabilities with the APG-82, inclu including range that's going to give, give them the benefit over, over the threats that exist in the region. You know, obviously that's very important for Japan to, to be relevant in that area. And so that's what we've been working with with Boeing as well as the U.S. Air Force to bring them those capabilities along with other capabilities that will be on the, on the upgraded jet um, as soon as we get off the ground there.